So we've identified two causes of deflation. Either decreases in aggregate demand or increases in aggregate supply can cause a nation to go from experiencing a healthy inflation rate of between 2 and 3% and either disinflation in the short run or deflation in the long run. So what are the consequences of deflation? Is falling price levels a good thing or a bad thing for a nation as a whole? That depends on whose perspective you look at. We'll break down our analysis of the consequences into different stakeholders. We'll start with households. On one hand, lower prices increase real wages. So people whose wages are fixed, for example, who have contracts or are on pensions that are not adjusted for inflation, people whose incomes or wages are fixed will actually see the purchasing power of money increase as prices fall. On one hand, this is a good thing. Households will see goods get cheaper, their real incomes as a result rise. On the other hand, employment decreases as demand for output falls. So we could see unemployment rise as a result of deflation. This of course is in the case of demand deficient deflation. As wages adjust, firms will hire workers back and employment will increase again. But in the short run, if deflation is caused by falling aggregate demand, this could harm households who will see employment opportunities decrease as firms lay off workers to adjust to the falling prices. So that brings us to firms. How are firms affected by deflation? Generally speaking, businesses are not fans of deflation. Falling prices mean less revenue for firms and due to sticky wages in the short run, as we've explained in previous lessons, firms must reduce output and fire workers. Firms do not like deflation. If you are a business owner, falling prices is the worst thing you can see in a nation. It means that the revenues you will be earning in the future are decreasing. This will lead to less business investment and less aggregate demand in the economy. And that brings us to what we call a deflationary spiral. Perhaps one of the worst things that a nation can experience is a deflationary spiral. When falling prices lead firms to fire workers, incomes fall among households, leading to less consumption, and further falling prices. All of this leads to less investment, less income, less consumption, and falling prices. As you can see, I'm describing a downward spiral here. The existence of deflation could be one of the worst things an economy can experience as the expectation of lower prices in the future will disincentivize consumption today. Less consumption today with the expectation of lower prices tomorrow leads to less demand, less employment, and further deflation. This is what we describe as a deflationary spiral. Looking back at our graph, we have already started to show the beginnings of a deflationary spiral. If we continue the logic here, then the deflation that already exists and the recessionary gap that already exists will further put downward pressure on wages. And as wages fall, aggregate demand will continue to fall. And we could end up with a country stuck in a recession with further and further deflation over time. This downward pressure on prices and wages without a full self-correction could result in a country getting stuck in a recessionary gap where output remains below full employment and due to the persistence of expected deflation, households and firms will continually cut back on consumption and investment, preventing the economy from ever self-correcting. The deflationary spiral is the most undesirable consequence of deflation and possibly one of the greatest macroeconomic challenges a country could face. So that brings us to the question about what are some possible solutions to deflation? If the existence of deflation and the possibility of deflationary spirals is so devastating to an economy, then policymakers must be equipped with some tools to fight deflation if it exists. We'll talk about demand side policies first. Demand side policies are aimed at boosting demand during a period of deflation to drive prices back up and create an environment favorable to business investment and consumption. In a previous lesson, we talked about why a target inflation rate of 2 to 3% is desirable. Anything less than that might send a signal to businesses that we are approaching deflation, which will lead to less investment, less employment, less output, and a recession.
Anything more than that might signal to households that we should expect further price increases leading to increase in consumption and an inflationary spiral which was described in a previous lesson. A target rate of between 2 and 3% inflation is considered low and stable and desirable for promoting long-run economic growth. Demand-side policies are commonly used to counteract the deflationary pressures that the free market might be promoting in an economy. Now, when we talked about inflation, we talked about how supply-side policies can also be used. Policies aimed at reducing the inflation rate by reducing the cost of production for firms. However, in the case of deflation, supply-side policies might actually exacerbate the problem, whereas lower costs or more productivity or greater potential output for firms could help an economy get back to full employment, it will further decrease the average price level and exacerbate any deflationary pressures that already exist in the economy. So in this lesson, we've defined deflation. We've talked about the demand and the supply factors that can cause deflation. We've talked about how deflation affects households. On one hand, in a positive way, as it increases the purchasing power of their incomes, deflation increases purchasing power of money as prices fall, but that leads to an incentive for people not to spend money but to save. Therefore, we end up with what we call deflationary spirals, as less consumption leads to falling prices, less investment, lower incomes, and further decreases in consumption and further falling prices. So on one hand, as households see their real incomes rise, it creates an incentive for them not to consume as much as they would have if there were a low and stable rate of inflation. Firms hate deflation. It means lower prices. It means less revenue. It means that they have to cut their output, cut their employment, and lay off workers. Solutions include demand-side policies aimed at boosting aggregate demand during a recession, during a period of deflation, to try to drive the price level back up to a healthy rate of between 2 and 3% inflation. Here we go.